Now, we usually show you the chart and then tell you the story, but this one, we're also going to give you the trades. We're highlighting three companies whose CEOs joined us right here on CNBC today. Chris Crisanti is our trader. He is chief equity strategist at MAI Capital Management and joins us now. All right, Chris, welcome to the Dome. First up is Snap. It is on pace for its worst year ever. I mean, it's down 77%, so if it had a worse year, it'd probably be at zero. Social media company recently announced that it is laying off about 20% of its staff as it struggles to compete in the ad revenue race. CEO Evan Spiegel this morning on CNBC said the changes were painful but necessary. We wanted to make sure, you know, because we're so focused on our on, you know, building our business over the long term and really serving our community, we wanted to make sure we could generate cash even in an environment where, you know, our revenue didn't grow or, uh, you know, even uh, grew at a negative rate. So I think for us, obviously, these changes are very difficult. They're painful, but they're all about ensuring our long term success. I mean, Chris, you wonder, he says long term success. I mean, with the stock down 77 percent, is this is this a question of long term survival? Brian, it's good to be with you again. I, I, I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, this is a, a, a tough one. You, you want to root for them. They're, I think they're doing the right things. But now it's a total show me story. There's really three headwinds there. There's the general ad slowdown, which is it's just even tougher for smaller platforms like Snap than for Google or Facebook. There's the iOS privacy changes, which is, has really hit a bunch of folks, and Snap not least. And, and finally, there's the competition from, from folks like TikTok. So they're taking the bold steps. They're laying off 20 percent of the workforce. But the risk reward here is still skewed towards risk, I think, even with the stock down so much. So I don't care about valuation. I don't care about how much it's down. I need to see a visible sign of progress. It's too early to go here. I'd pass. Is there anything they can do to change it, to change your mind? Yeah, no, you, you, you want to see a quarter or two of, of improvement, of stability. And, and look, they're doing the right things, but they also can't control the macro environment. So if we do fall into a recession, that's going to be a, a tough one, too. So they are doing the right things with the things that they can control, but it's not all in their own hands right now. All right, let's move on. Snap, thumbs down. Next up, though, is Starbucks. On pace for its best week since July, it reveals the CEO's succession plan. Founder and interim CEO Howard Schultz will be succeeded by outgoing Record chief Lakshman Narasim starting next month. They both joined Squawk Box this morning, and Schultz said he is leaving Starbucks at a good place, particularly in China. We've been in China now 21 years. We occupy a position like no other Western brand. About 6,000 stores. We're opening one store every 10 hours in China. The situation in China is opening up. So our position there, China will be much larger than the U.S. when we're all said and done. All right, so there you go. You just heard from Schultz and the incoming CEO. What do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down in the stock, Chris. Yeah, you know, I, I do thumbs up here, Brian. Uh, I think Starbucks deserves the benefit of the doubt, and, and I like it here. Next Tuesday, they have a big investor day, so it's a big deal. They're going to lay out their plan going forward. But the most important thing is the plan is that, that the guy who was just talking, Howard Schultz, is leaving. And uh, he was obviously the interim CEO. Uh, the new CEO, Nara Simum, is, is really well respected. This guy has turned around uh, Reckitt Brankheiser in the, in the uh, UK, and which doesn't have nearly the brand heft of Starbucks. Uh, the demand for Starbucks products remains strong. So this is not a problem of, of reinvigorating the brands. The issues are more on the pricing and the cost side. But that's an easier fix if customers are still coming into the stores, which they are. So the question here is, do they have the right plan? Well, Take a look on Tuesday. And will they have the right people, including Mr. Uh, uh, Narasim? Uh, and I think that they do. So I'm an optimist. The jury's still out, but I think it's a good speculation. Yeah, I, I do wonder, though. And Rick, it's a great global company for what they do, consumer products. It's probably not a household name here. It's a, it's a German company. They make Lysol and Clearasil. And I just wonder, you know, Starbucks is a retail consumer experience business. Right? It seems like a different it's skill true. set. For sure. But, but uh, you know, Howard Schultz is a smart guy. He's got a lot invested, not just uh, money-wise, yeah. but also in, in terms of his, 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 his being and creating this company. Uh, and the board, I think, did a good job. I mean, yeah, it's a different kind of company, but it is a brand company. But most importantly, it was a turnaround, and he did a great job. He reinvigorated yeah. the revenue there. As, as you know, the stock dropped 5% on the announcement that he was leaving. So that, that was a big deal. Northern Michigan University's own Howard Schultz. Go Huskies. All right, the final name is Box. Bucking the downward trend in tech this year. It is flat in 2022 despite falling in three of the past four months. CEO Aaron Levy said the company had to take a hard look at its business to stay competitive. 
We had to look exhaustively across the business, this is going back two years ago, to ensure that we were doubling down in the areas that were most profitable, that were, were growing fastest, that we could drive most efficiently, and we put our resources really uh, behind those initiatives. All right, Chris, let's talk about Box. It's stock number three. Your take, thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, you know, Brian, I'm a conservative guy, so usually I wouldn't like a company like this, but I'm giving it a thumbs up because uh, it's continued to grow revenues in a tough environment. And the funny thing is it's it's small. Uh, it's only about a $3 billion market cap. Its small size is actually an advantage right now because, one, it has a long runway. It can continue to grow revenue at, we think, low double-digit rates for a number of years to come. But also, it's nice to be small in tech now because the large-cap tech sector is just out of favor and getting slammed every other day. So that's a tough place to be, but they've been able to avoid that. The management team has not shot for the moon, but instead they've managed to grow slowly and well. A couple of years ago, I would have said, well, anybody can do that in a bull market. But over the past few quarters, they've proved they can do that in a more difficult period, including they're facing right now a really tough currency headwind. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.